This podcast is powered by The Plug. The Connect with Graffiti. Once again, back in the building is to connect, listen. So community and culture is the connect, right? So we cannot have community. We cannot have black community in Colorado 2024 without mentioning today's guest, Keith community keys yay you know I, I like the community keys i yeah. saw that i'm like i like that, that <laughs> i had to switch it up that rings community yeah. keys how you how you living i'm you know just living in the community you know just <laughs> uh just happy to be here of course i respect what you're doing um i always respect what you're doing What's love? i actually told my son i was like yeah i'm meeting with graffiti he was like graffiti that's a cool name i was like <laughs> i know um but you know i've just been living and um uplifting the community and just supporting Everyone, you know. Where? How's your mental? Uh, my mental is actually better than it's been. I um, I lost a bunch of people between 2020 and 2022, including my son's father, and that was hard. Yeah. So, like, I kind of crashed. But, you know, community actually helped me with real stuff. Like, I really... I started focusing on the community and, like, coming together with people who I know rock with me and I rock with them and then also just spending more time on myself like mm-hmm. genuinely self-care and not like just getting your nails done and get going to the <laughs> yeah. tub but like taking those days off and spending it with myself or you know going on hikes or being around real loved ones it's really changed my mindset and really switched my focus up so I feel like I'm here you yeah know? that's what's up yeah. that's what's up <laughs> so the last time we connected on a platform like this uh we were talking about yoga and just healing and breathing and things like that. I know you're still in that space, correct? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, that's actually it's funny. I mean, the building we're in, I teach yoga for, um, well, I I know I had stepped away, but for the last few years, I was teaching yoga for Fit and New. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you know, they're in the same building. But yeah, um, yeah, so I'm still teaching yoga. I have, this will be the fourth year that we're doing yoga in the park at City Park. And that's a really big deal because I've catered to black and brown bodies. And I do contract work with different people. And I just took a break, like I said, for my mental because I just wanted to really show up because everybody's really expecting me to. And I don't want to just come half-assed. And so taking this break, I really feel refreshed and I'm ready. Um, I do a six-week grief course. So I'm going to start that up again, which leads to the whole community thing because grief and healing, you need community. Yeah, yeah. I love it. So let's rewind. Let's rewind. Let's talk about a a, a young Keese because I'm curious how you got to this point of like, you know, you always kind of carry this energy of like peace and serenity, even though, you know, you might be going through tribulation. <laughs> I'm just wondering how you got to this point. Like what like what was that turning point? Like, yo, I'm I'm going to I'm going to help my people get right. It's so funny that you say that, because like people who know me are always like, show them Keese, you know, because like yeah. I, I come from like there's people who know me who are like Keese don't teach yoga because they know exactly. I was not peaceful. <laughs> I was super hood. I was super street. That's I was, what I was out to here. Say, yeah. That's what I'm trying to say without saying it. So. Yeah, no, I was out here. I was really out here and I'll be out here every day if I have to. Don't don't let this yoga fool don't get you. It I'll get back out here. But <laughs> um, truly, I was in a different type of community um, with church and church hurt is a different type of hurt and I'm not blaming the church or anybody else but I experienced a hurt Mm. that was really deep to me and in that it really just shifted my perspective on what healing looks like and I seriously randomly something in my spirit was like look up yoga and I'm like why would I look up yoga that's a white thing that's really what I tell myself so I was like I looked up free yoga classes I found this free yoga class all the way in Highlands Ranch super white (laughs) and when I went though I was uncomfortable. There was a lot of um, microaggressions. Like people were wondering if I knew where I was going. I didn't have a yoga mat, so I was being judged because I literally brought a blanket. There was a lot of things, but my body was like, sorry, we're coming back next week. And every week I went, something just shifted in my mind. Like I never experienced a healing like this before. Like I I was more in tune with myself. I was more, um, I I used to have an anger issue, you know? So I, I was less, quick to anger um and then i thought people of color or people who at least come from backgrounds like me who do have hood backgrounds who have been in the streets who may have come from poverty and just trauma in general need a space yeah and then i was like i guess i'll try and teach yoga and then it literally changed my life i i can't even look back at anything i used to do because yoga and 
this lifestyle has literally laid a new path for me. Yeah. And, and that's what even led me to community because in yoga, I learned about healing and healing isn't just an alone thing. So you could do it on your own, but once you do it on your own, we have to come back in community. You have to go back into the world. And that's when you find out if you really even been healing, yeah, you know, for real. And, um, that's what led me to be like, okay, well, we need to heal together. And then that's what uh, my business, my yoga business, uh, the tagline is let's heal together. Yeah. It's not, I'm still healing to this day. I mm. will still trip. Don't, don't, please don't, <laughs> don't have graffiti <laughs> let y'all think I'm out here just peace and love and all that all the time. She keeps <laughs> emphasizing it, man. She's like, I'm still outside. Don't, yeah, don't, don't, that that you know? yoga, I'll do some moves on your ass. But nah, nah, that's love. So again, just seeing that growth and progression from where you were to where you are, and then we're all still grown. We're all still healing. Um, has it been, I would say it would have to be overwhelming. Right now, I think the culture is in a space where healing and self-reflection, all that is just like at, at the forefront, but it wasn't always like that. No. So like, I know there had to be some struggles in the beginning. Yeah, especially as being like, I only met like three other black yoga teachers at the time yeah. in this whole state. Like, and I was like, like, we literally had a lunch meeting and I was like, is this real? And she's like, yes. <laughs> so um, that was overwhelming because one, again, coming from the background I came from, people were like, you're doing what? You yeah. know? And then two, it was trying to create the space and really be intentional. Like, hey, I know you want to support. Um, as an ally, but really I need to make this space very clearly for people of color or it's not going to serve its purpose because some of us don't feel safe being vulnerable um, in places. Like, think about it. All day we're putting on this mask. If you're working mm -hmm. in corporate or you're just going to the grocery store, uh, I think it was Dion Cole, he made a stand-up that was like, black people can't be black all day. Come on. <laughs> and that's the truth. And I never really thought about it until I started doing yoga. And I was like, why do I feel so free in this space with my people? And, and that's how it was even at my church because it was a very, you know, people of color type of church. And so I was like, why do I always feel free here? And I was trying to find that. So there was a little pushback. But once people understood what I was trying to do, you know, it, it built. Like my very first yoga class was in the back of a barber studio. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I only had like five people. Yeah. And then, you know, people started seeing I was consistent and that I was here still. And I was serious about what I was doing. And it built. And now I literally have a community who lifts me when I'm down and I can lift them too. So, yeah. You know what's so dope about that is just building that community from scratch. So, of course, we're in Colorado, everything's white. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so you often feel, or at least I do, you you feel this pressure where it's like, damn, maybe I'm too black. Man. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, damn, but at the end of the day, I'm very black. I'm hella black, and mm -hmm. I stand on culture, and that's what I do. But there aren't very many platforms, outlets, spaces to stand on culture, so we always got to create them. But the thing I'm seeing is when we create them, they grow. Because mm -hmm. everybody or all of our people want that. Yes. But it just takes a few of us to stand up like, yeah, I'm going to build this. I'm going to build this community. Yeah. For real. That's what people are looking for. They're yeah. literally looking for it. And they don't even know it oftentimes. They, they just, don't. They're just like, I don't know what I need. And then you get into that space, you're like, this is what I need. Like when you had the women from Vibes in the Park, mm -hmm. I needed that. I didn't even know I needed that until I was there. I was like, what? I need this. I need this all the time. <laughs> like, you know, like I'm there because I need it. It's something. It just feels like freedom. It's a feeling. It feels like safety. It feels like just like you're refreshed for the week, you know? Yeah. And so, yeah, I wanted to create that vibe as well. Yeah. And that vibe can't be, you, you said it, that feeling, it can't be duplicated at all. Mm -mm. And I, I keep saying that because we see, you know, with gentrification and everything, you'll go to a coffee shop, a yoga shop, and they playing Wu-Tang and they got vinyl records and they're like, oh yeah, we're so for the culture. Right. And it's like, nah, this feels weird. It feels created. It feels forced. Yeah. And know? when you're really around that organic vibe, you're like, yeah. This is it. I need that, like yeah. you said. Yeah. So on that note, see you online, right? See you on Instagram. I see you on TikTok. I'm in my Explorer page. I'm scrolling. I'm like, hey, that's Keys. Uh -huh. What's she talking about? <laughs> Black spaces in Denver. Let's talk about how you got to that point. Um, well, I actually just started with sharing like individual spaces. Like I went to, um, I was sharing it in my stories, especially in 2020 when everything was hitting. Like uh, Brianna losing. Um, oh my goodness. Brianna Taylor. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. No, but losing Brianna Taylor, George Floyd, all of those things actually really hit me 
really hard and I couldn't comprehend what it was like I was just like I'm depressed and I don't understand why mm. and I was working for a trauma center at the time and I told my therapist and she was like uh, you might be missing community and you might this might be hurting you so just start like creating outlets or looking for outlets and I didn't really see anything so I just started sharing black businesses more intensely I've always done it I've always as soon as I buy something from a black business it's going on my social media but I started sharing in my stories and then I just decided, I think it was 2021, to go into a place. And I was really nervous. And I went to Coffee High Co. Um, on Blake. And it's a coffee shop. And it's black owned. And I went in there. And I, and uh, rest in peace also to the owner. Yeah, man. Definitely rest in peace, SK. Um, I went in there. And I just did the video. And everybody loved it. And so then I just started doing just spaces. But then I started getting messages like, hey, can you share my event? Can you share my this? Can you share my that? And I was like, sure. And I always pronounce her name wrong. Um, she used to be here in Denver. I believe it's Joss. I think I was calling her Joyce, though. Mm -hmm. But she used to share a monthly thing. Yeah. And I love that. And she would actually share my yoga class on there. And then... It's a uh, black as fuck things to do in yes, Denver. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I loved it. And I would always share that. And then more... But again, people were hitting me like every week. I have something this week. I have something. And I'm like, okay, let me just share this as well. Because she was still sharing hers at the time. Um, and then it just blew up like I just started doing it and at first it was just like whenever I could and then more people were like hey I have this I have this and I was like well people need to know these things so uh <laughs> so you know it just fit in with what I was already doing because all I'm trying to do is share the other businesses I mean it's mm. not about me like I think it's dope that I've gotten people to look at my page but it's because they're looking at these businesses yeah. these community spaces and then they're going i've had so many people come up to me like i went to this i went to that i checked yeah. out this so that's why i said i've been using you as a resource of what's like happening yeah like, let me see what keith is talking about so i can go check it out um has that sudden rise in popularity online become a thing for you like how are you receiving that like my son and my other homegirl like you've always been popular but that's only because I, I always tell them this. I'm not popular. I literally meet somebody. They say hello. Every time I see them, I speak to them mm -hmm. from that point on. And then that just builds a knowing. Yeah, so, just friendly. So, I, exactly. I mean, that's what that's the community part of it. So, this really isn't different from that. The only difference I would say is, like, like one of the uh, posts I made that got really blown up was sugars. Yeah. And I had to take it down because... I mean, people were, like, threatening my life. <laughs> like, I was like, whoa, what is going on? I didn't know it was that secret. So my son... Sugars was a secret, kids. I didn't realize it. And <laughs> and even I asked him. And, like, actually, I grew up with his family. So I had a friend um, when I was younger named Dwayne. And that, this is his uncle. So, like, I just knew these people. And when my son's dad passed, that was a place he loved to eat. So for his birthday, we just went. I, showed, I shared, asked him if I could share the video. I shared. And then it blew up. It had, like, 275,000 views. Yeah, that went crazy. It was actually crazy but in the comments people were like take this down you better not share this i can't believe you you're you're not black like you're not <laughs> you don't know you don't know what you're like you are on violation basically i saw that they was on your helmet it's like you she, didn't even see the messages she blew though. up the spot she made it hot she made it hot and i had to let people know again don't let this yoga community stuff <laughs> fool you because i'm not the one okay but um Sugars did end up getting shut down, but he, when I talked to them, it wasn't my fault. He was speaking on how they had other things they needed to do, and he actually reopened. I just don't want to tell nobody since everybody yeah. was coming at me, but he did reopen. Just he ain't know reopen, y'all. He ain't reopen. He did. I'm not going to tell you where. It's not at his old <laughs> spot, but he got a spot. Okay. So I could tell you offline if you don't know. Yep. I don't know nothing about <laughs> nothing. <laughs> um, but that was like the most, that was really hard for me because I was like, I'm just trying to share spaces. Yeah. I didn't realize how upset that would make people. Mm. And it's still a balance. So now I'm very clear when I go to places. Can I share this? Yeah. It may have lots of views. You may get lots of business. Mm -hmm. Are you legit? Like, you know yeah, what I yeah. mean? Like, is it okay <laughs> to do this? So. Yeah, that's dope. That's dope. What's been some of your favorite spots, just personally, that you frequent or um, events? Again, Vibes in the Park. Like, literally, that's like, it, it gave me an old feeling of... Uh, jazz in the park back in the day yeah. like i know they still have jazz in the park but not like they did back yeah in it's the day. definitely our our generation's jazz in the that's park. what it is yeah um and then also i loved uh the cake bar so i transitioned to being kind of like pescatarian vegan and the cake bar has the best tasting vegan like 
desserts ever. Like you don't even know they're vegan. Yeah, like yeah, it's yeah. crazy. They're so good. The cake bar. It's called the cake bar, and okay. it's a black woman owned uh, dessert spot on um, 13th and Grant, kind of that area over there. Okay. And let me see what else. I really a uh, saucy southern was cool. They were a vibe. I really liked the food there. Um, there's some other place on the tip of my mind. I really can't think because I've been, I think I should, oh, tea leaves. I love tea leaves. I feel so bougie when I go. Like you can, <laughs> I actually, me and my home girl, we did a, one of her, you can actually do like a tea date where you go and then you have a couple different teas to try and like trinkets and biscuits and it's really fun. And that's really a staple in yeah. five points as well. So, or downtown. Um, so that was, that's another favorite too. Yeah. That's dope. That's I mean, dope. they're all my favorite. I have no favorite, y'all. I love all of you. Word. All <laughs> of them are dope. All yeah. of them are dope. That's dope. So I really just wanted to connect with you, kind of just reconnect, see what you got going on, definitely touch base with how you got to this community point. But what's next? What's coming up for you? Or where do you see yourself moving after this space or um, expanding this space? Yeah, I just want to expand this. I just want to continue to be consistent mm -hmm. um, and share even more black owned businesses because there's so many that's the best thing like and um i even talked to norman harris who was one of the owners of spangling and i'd mm -hmm. like to share them pretty soon but we were talking about like not only highlighting the past of five points because i think that's all we talk about it's yeah. just like oh what we used to do and, what we used to West, have. Yeah. and some people don't even know that which yeah. is crazy but to highlight more of like the future where is the black colorado future going where where are our black home how are we going to continue to support and uplift them moving forward how do we continue to expand this how do we pass this on to younger generations how do we encourage more people to own businesses like in a way that feels good to them so just right. continuing to support really and i still have yoga so you know just trying to expand vibes in the park and that community spaces i mean not vibes in the park uh, yoga in the park <laughs> look look she's so i'm so i'm <laughs> such a fan girl for vibes in the park um but no um just that just continue to expand the community healing space because it's not just about parties and coming together to just get lit and stuff it's literally about that healing feeling we get when we're together and so yeah. just really b making that bigger that's fire that's fire last question so you you keep reiterating the fact that don't get it twisted <laughs> i'm still growing you keep reiterating that yeah but if you could step back and talk to that keese that was just out here wilding like and the keys that you are now like what is some advice that you would give your younger self i would say keep wilding girl no i'm just saying <laughs> It's like stay on their necks. This shit ain't, this no, shit ain't sweet. <laughs> I would say like truly find people who make you feel really good about you. And if you can't find them, find yourself. Find yourself as quickly as possible. And by that I mean just like find what you love about yourself. Find what makes you feel good. Find even if it makes you weird, even makes you um, stand out, even if people don't understand, find those things that feel like love to you because the sooner you love yourself and i know we've said this it might sound super like over said but the sooner you love yourself the sooner it all just falls into place because i feel like people fuck with me because i am myself i'm not right. showing up as nobody else but me and and you do that by knowing who you are and you know who you are when you start loving yourself that's a fact so Keys, anything you want to plug? You want to let them know how to find you, how to become one of those millions of followers? <laughs> um, yeah, I, I want to say, you know, I'm doing my best to share the businesses. So, like, you know, please share what you've got going on with me, DM or message. But um, I'm doing my best, y'all. And you can hit me on um, IG Community Keys, TikTok Community Keys. And um, I have Charismatic Movement, which is the yoga I teach. Um, and it's for black and brown bodies to heal together. And that is um, let's heal together dot us on IG. Cool. Appreciate it. Keys. I need to come do some yoga. Too. You really oh, should. Oh, and I also want to say really quick, don't be scared of uh, it. Uh, like uh. literally it feels good. And we're all here together just figuring it out. Word. Appreciate you, Keys. Yeah. Thank you so much. No doubt. Let's connect. Graffiti. Out. Yeah.